I've got one side in there, but I think what the problem is, is I can't swing the hammer past this horn. So I'm gonna have to take this front end out again and try and put the control arms on, on the bench. Let's put this front end in. Straight in, no problem. Well, now that I'm bolting this front end in for the final time, I'm gonna go away from these standard nuts here. And I'm gonna use some self-locking ones. So I've prepped up all these bolts and it's time to put them in. So I'm going to torque all these bolts up to, well the chart says that a half inch UNF bolt should be torqued up to about 105 pound. I'm going to take it up to 100 and just leave it at that. Oh, I've jammed up the spanner in the chassis there. that one And then I'll go get the other side done as well. Well, I've been trying to get this lower control arm in for the last few hours. I even tried freezing the bushes for an hour or so, but I just can't get them in. I've got one side in there, but I think what the problem is, is I can't swing the hammer past this horn. So I can't get a good hit in here. So I'm gonna have to take this front end out again and try and put the control arms on, on the bench. Yep. Taking the front out of this was the best thing to do to get those control arms in. I guess the problem with the front horns on these doesn't give you a chance to hit it with the hammer square. Every time I was putting the bush in, it was going in a little bit cocked. But putting it on the ground here, I could stand it up, straight up, 90 degrees to the floor and hit it perfectly straight every time. Now I just gotta get the other side on. So I did wanna add something. When you put these bushes in, you're best off using a piece of 4040 RHS, cut it down to 42 millimeters in length, and that'll fit up in here. Then use a 36 millimeter socket, chuck it on here and start whaling on it. And there's that piece in there, and this hit down flat. All I've got to do now is just pull it out, Chuck that away now. And this bolt and washer simply goes right here. I'm not gonna tighten it up just yet. Two things, I think I wanna paint them. And secondly, you really shouldn't tighten all these up until there's the whole weight of the car on there. Otherwise the bush might bind and rip the bush. So for the moment, I'll just assemble this all hand tight after I just give it a coat of paint tonight.
So I managed to get those lower control arms onto the cross member and I've got the cross member bolted back into the frame. And what I'm doing now is just putting the top control arms on. They're pretty simple. They just slip over the top of this and they have two bolts that go through here. But what I'll make sure to do as well is put these shims back in. Now they're for your camber caster adjustment and although it's probably wrong, I just want them there for the guy that's gonna do the wheel alignment so that he's got the shims and get it right. And as you can see, they just sit in there like that. Once that's all bolted up, they'll come down and meet the stub axle. So the next thing to do is uh, put these stub axles on. And it's just a simple matter of pushing it up into the top here, putting a nut on, and then bringing this up into here and putting another nut on this ball joint. What you're really supposed to do at this time is be putting a spring that goes up in here and sits on here as well. And then after that, a shock goes through here and bolts in through the top here. But to put this spring in, you really need some weight in the car and it probably should be done with a jack put underneath here. I can't do that, I don't have the engine in the cradle here and or the engine in the chassis. So I'm just gonna just put it together anyway. And when there is some weight in this or when the chassis is down on the ground, this is just gonna bottom out here on this bump stop here and it's gonna sit really, really low. But that's probably not a bad thing because what I'll be able to do is put the body in front of the chassis up on some stands and just wheel it under and be able to put down the body upon the chassis. Uh, it'll be a lot lower, so I won't have to bring up the body as high. So even these, I'm not gonna do them up with a spanner. That's gonna be fine. And this will enable me to be able to put the rack in, put some discs on, and then I'll be able to put some wheels on it. I'll go do this to the other side now. Well, I've wheeled the chassis out into the front of my garage here because I think I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Well, I've got the cab out from the corner there and I thought I might put a little bit of paint just around here, a little bit on the roof here and some on the back here because that's just black primer at the moment. So I'm just gonna put some matte black top coat on to prep it so that I can paint it. Get this rust effect going on again. Because it's probably not a good idea to paint it while it's on the chassis. I mean, you know, I could, but it might be just a bit better just to paint it right here. And that way I'm not getting any paint or anything over the freshly painted chassis. Because this rust paint tends to make a little bit of a mess. Well, I went through the cupboard and I found some of this. I found two cans, so I must have bought it some time ago for, for something else. Now this is a top coat and it's made by PPG. So although it's a cheap paint down at the hardware, I figure it should be okay if it's made by PPG. PPG is a big company here in Australia that makes some really good paint. So, like I said, cheap paint, but you know, the whole thing's just on the cheap, so I don't mind using it. tack off for about 10 minutes and I'll put a second coat on it. So it's been about 10 or 15 minutes. I'll give it its second coat.
Well, with that all painted, I can get onto some other things on the chassis. Put this back over there and let it dry. Once it's dry, I'll get out the uh, rust paint that I've got there. You paint it all on. You would have seen me do it on another video. I'll just try and, as they say, blow it in. And not that you blow it in, not that you spray paint it, it's brushed on. Well, it's a little bit later and all that matte black paint I put on is dry. So I'm going to start putting on this rust paint. But, um, I've done a little bit of beige here on the roof. I don't know, I'm just playing around with some things. Just hoping to try and make it match here and across here, down here. You can see a little bit here. I don't think I'm going to put any beige on this side because this is how this door was. It was, was completely rusted, but I've just gone over it with the rust paint. And uh, see if I can't get this rust paint to, to basically work. I don't have much left, and I've got to use it pretty sparingly. Because I really just don't want to go out and buy another pot of it. Wish me luck, and let's see how this turns out. Well, for a bit that you're probably not even going to see, well, most definitely not going to see because there's a big tray there. I probably spent a little bit too much time on that. But anyway, this is just the first coat. So we've got that. We've got a bit on the roof. I'll put a little bit of beige here. I'll see how it all goes. Not too sure. I don't mind this bit here. Although, on the second coat, I'll probably put a bit more over this little bit of green here. Got some down the quarters there, right along the bottom, right across the front here, and on the firewall as well. This door didn't need any, but I did need to put a little bit down here on the sill here. Now, I've also got a couple other little bits and pieces that need doing, so I'll fish them out. And while I'm waiting for this to dry, so I can put another second coat on, or so I can put a second coat on, I'll get those other little bits and pieces painted. Well, this is one of the pieces I was talking about. It's a little trim panel that I made, and it goes right down the bottom of the body here, and it'll just wrap around to the back here. Much like that. So I'll put a little bit of this rust paint on this as well. It seems I'd already done this one before. Maybe this other one here wasn't on the car when I painted the rust paint originally. So I'll get a little bit on this as well. Well, I don't think you need to put much paint on this and I didn't video it. One coat will probably do on this. So I'll just let that dry and get back onto this cab.
Okay, well, I'm calling it. That's enough. I've got the tiniest bit of paint left. <laughs> I don't even know if you can call that a tiny bit of paint. It really is. Anyway, I want to keep that just in case I need to do a tiny touch up or something like that. So I'll throw that in the fridge and hopefully it won't dry out. Anyway, I've got some fancy little things going on here, which I'm gonna leave. Because uh, when you put the solution on this, some of this stuff washes away. So I'm hoping this roof turns out okay with the whole beige and green thing I've got going on there. As you can see, I've just blended that through to the bit that I'd already done before. That's fine. Little bit here. Don't know what I've done here, but you know what, I'm gonna leave that as well. As you can see, there's bits and pieces I've had to redo on the body. Around the screen here. And the front of this. So that does have to dry for at least 12 hours. It may even be more, I'm, I'm not really sure. I probably should read the instructions again. But I think it's something like that. And we'll come back and put some solution on it and watch it rust again. Like it did before.